The hunt has a long, rich, and colorful history in Idaho. Centuries ago, Native American bow hunters marked their successes on the canyon walls of the Salmon River. In the fall of 1805, the Lewis and Clark expedition nearly starved as they searched for wild game in Idaho's rugged Bitterroot country. The mountain men followed, trudging in the footsteps of those first white explorers, drawn to the rigorous life of hunting and trapping for survival. Soon after, settlers arrived. They tamed the land, but still taught their sons and daughters how to hunt in the wild country. Idaho's hunting heritage was born of necessity, forged in the bonds of family tradition, and remains to this day an extraordinary legacy that the Idaho Department of Fish and Game strives to preserve and protect. In this spirit, Fish and Game is launching the Mule Deer Initiative, a tribute to all who value our hunting heritage. It is a concerted effort to enhance mule deer habitat, increase mule deer populations, and improve hunter satisfaction. Although mule deer populations are good in parts of our state, other parts of Idaho are not meeting the Department of Fish and Game's objectives or sportsmen's expectations. Over the next few years, the Idaho Department of Fish and Game will be partnering with federal and state land agencies, sportsmen groups, and private landowners to launch an intensive effort to enhance mule deer numbers. Idaho's mule deer population stands at about 300,000. While that is considered to be a healthy figure, it's only about half what it was believed to be in the 1960s. Since then, however, the West has seen a number of changes and, as a result, mule deer populations have fallen off. This problem is not exclusive to Idaho. Mule deer numbers have declined throughout the West. The Mule Deer Initiative represents the department's commitment to improving mule deer hunting opportunities. It has five components. The first is habitat management, focusing on improving conservation reserve program lands, winter range, and healthy aspen stands. The second is population management. This includes monitoring mule deer populations to present more accurate information for setting seasons, thus providing a variety of hunting opportunities, including hunting for mature bucks. The third component is monitoring predator populations and reducing their numbers when and where it is appropriate. This will be based on scientific research on predator and prey interactions. Fourth is to promote hunter access to public and private lands, including motorized and non-motorized hunting experiences. And finally, public involvement and support is critical to the long-term goal of improving mule deer populations. The public will be informed about what is being done and encouraged to participate in volunteer efforts to improve mule deer habitat. Habitat is the first component. Large portions of habitat have been lost to development. Sidewalks, streets, and lawns are replacing sagebrush, aspen, bunch grass, and other plants that mule deer eat. Moreover, some summer ranges have been negatively affected by fire suppression, leaving large, dense tree stands with none of the critical shrub growth beneath for deer to feed on. And then there are the environmental conditions to consider, such as drought or harsh winters. About every 10 years or so, we see a winter that comes through, especially southern Idaho, and kind of knocks the mule deer populations back. What's real interesting is that summer range in some cases may be even more important than the winter range because if these deer will come into winter range in really good shape, lots of fat on them, they can survive most winters that we have. Invasive species, plants not native to the west, are another contributing factor. Cheatgrass, knapweed, thistle, and other noxious weeds are crowding out the native grasses and shrubs that mule deer eat. As weeds take over, mule deer and other species have less and less high quality food. The bottom line, the less food available, the fewer deer that can survive in any area. The steady disappearance of aspen stands like these over the past 50 to 60 years has also played a key role in mule deer decline. Aspen stands are critical food and shelter for does and their newborn fawns. Aspen requires some type of disturbance, whether that be cutting or burning or something, to kind of promote itself. And those are some of the things we're going to encourage with some key aspen stands.
Because of these habitat loss realities, the challenge will be to improve the remaining habitat to provide for more animals. This brings us to the second component, population management. In addition to monitoring numbers to set seasons, the plan will look at another factor, Shorthand. the expansion of elk into traditional mule deer range. Biologists have observed where both species occur, mule deer seem to suffer. The third component is predator management and whether it can achieve the goal of improving mule deer populations. From 1997 to 2002, Fish and Game conducted a study of eight big game units stretching across southern Idaho. Nearly 1,700 coyotes and 150 mountain lions were removed from four of the units. In the other four units, the coyote and mountain lion harvest level stayed normal. To the next one. A later comparison showed that fawn survival rate did improve and there was an increase in adult survival in units where predators were removed, but overall the effect was relatively small. This was the largest coyote and mountain lion management project ever conducted. These results show that predators do play a role in mule deer survival and man can manipulate that role. However, the research shows that increasing southern Idaho's mule deer populations will require more than just predator management activities. Access management, the fourth component, is simply to promote and encourage hunter access to both public and private lands. And finally, public involvement, the fifth component. Fish and Game wants to work with hunters to provide the type of mule deer hunting opportunities sportsmen desire. Wildlife belongs to all of us. Together, we can preserve Idaho's hunting heritage and pass this extraordinary legacy to those who follow.